Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord and Byron's Adventures. So we are going to be fighting that army that attempted to take the nearby castle. Bear in mind that I am still injured. Yes, I am still very injured and we are now going to be making our way over the sand dunes. This, is, is it just me or does this not have any texture? Ah, there we go, there we go. It was just we were on the wrong side kind of, kind of thing. Anyway. We are going to get our people in position. Bear in mind, however, the very sad thing that has just transpired is that uh, my new vassals, uh, Godun's people, have been taken prisoner because I was just that little bit too late to get over to the castle, and as a result, it has been taken. But don't worry, I'm going to take it back very easily. Don't think it's going to be too difficult for me to take it back. And uh, otherwise, let's just tell my cavalry and my horse archers to charge in here because we do need to retaliate a little bit for the enemy attempting to be a bit annoying with their own cavalry. So let me see if I can do some damage. Poke them a little bit. That is what we want to do. Many, many pokings. And uh, it seems like the enemy, the enemy infantry and archers are not really doing anything of note, as you can see. They seem to be a little bit, um, <laughs> a little bit passive, not really wanting to attack. Uh, I think it would probably be advantageous for them to do so, however. So I guess I'll just move my forces over here. And I'm going to take my horse archers and all my other people and just basically tell them to hold back a little bit here. Oh, nice headshot. Can't believe I was actually able to get a headshot from there. That was pure luck, of course. But still, it's always it's always cool when that kind of, uh, that kind of moment happens. Oh, hello there. Uh, I'm jumping. I'm jumping all over the place. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now, now all we need to do is just stay alive. Just stay alive, Mr. Byron. That's all you need to do. I'm going to tell my people to charge in. Tell my horse, horse archers and uh, my, my cavalry and so on and so forth to charge in. And maybe we can do some damage to try and protect some of our archers. And then we should be okay because the enemy's infantry is just charging straight on into our infantry and that's a death sentence. That is a huge death sentence right there. I'm actually really surprised that Pelasora has leveled up her riding skill so incredibly fast. She seems to have a massive amount of riding skill. I have no idea how she was able to do that, considering. But there you go. She's almost got 250, which means that uh, she might very well be a candidate for us to control after... Byron's demise, which is inevitable at this point. Probably going to end up dying here if I don't put up my shield in time. Nope, seems like we're okay. Let's tell my infantry to charge in now. I think we should be able to mop the rest of them up, no problem at all. And there you go, victory. 102 renown and 60 influence for us right there. Obviously, influence is not really that important to me right now. And I think what I'm going to be doing now is... Um, <laughs> I'm going to be taking a lot of them. Should I take a lot of them prisoner? I mean, it doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't really make that much sense anyway. But I guess I'm going to let this guy go because he always seems to have a good personality. And he seems to say, hey, you're, you're you know, you're a man of honor and so on and so forth. So I think I'm just going to take, the, you know, him prisoner and we'll, we'll kind of try and keep those people in, uh, in our prisoner's hold for as long as they possibly can be. Uh, yeah, these these guys. Yeah, I'm going to take Unkid as well because, let's face it, he's just going to get a huge, huge army again and then he's going to come back at us and we're just going to repeat the cycle over and over. So it's going to be a better idea for me to just take them here and uh, try and keep them immobilized as, as much as we can, pretty much. Okay, so we have a huge amount of space in our prisoner's hold here because I dumped all of my prisoners in my nearby town and that means everything oh yes that means everything because that means that i will be able to take pretty much everything that's tier four or below and i can then put it in the garrison nearby and hopefully they'll get converted over time it does take a bit of time for that to actually happen by the way so obviously it's not a uh, instant instant uh, instant process by any means okay so let's just take these guys we'll take these guys as well and i, I might as well take the recruits why not? I have enough space to be able to do that. And uh, what we're going to need to do now is actually go over to the castle and actually take that. As you can see, though, I don't think there are any units in the garrison. Yeah, there's literally 12. <laughs> there is 12 in the garrison. That is really nothing. 
So we should have a very, very easy time of things. I'm a bit worried about my uh, my town over there because there's only 12 people in the garrison at the moment. So yeah, I mean, I basically rushed over here as fast as I could because I kind of wanted to help the um, help Godun to uh, try and survive. But unfortunately, uh, he did get himself taken prisoner nevertheless. All right, so I am going to be giving this back to him, I suppose. And uh, hopefully he'll be happy now and he won't leave us. <laughs> because if he does end up leaving us and joining the Azurai, for example, I don't think he's going to join the Azurai, to be fair, because the Azurai are kind of on the back foot at the moment. They're really not going to have that much power at all from now. And we should have a pretty easy time of things. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the nearby... Oh, hello. Another army. Hmm. Another army almost immediately, eh? Hmm. Okay, well, yes, that's... Uh, that is not exactly great, is it? All right, so basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place every single unit in here. Just literally every single unit. And uh, I'm, I, you know what? I'm going to... Should I keep? You know what? Yeah, I'm going to keep the Lords because I'm not entirely sure how that really works at this point. So I'm, I'm going to kind of just keep them with me. Because I don't really want to have them escape easier if they're in the dungeon. I'm not entirely sure how that works, as I say. I don't know what the percentage chances are of those guys escaping and things like that. I'm actually going to take a couple of prisoners here. I'm going to take the, the various cavalry because I'm going to try, if I very much can, which is highly unlikely at this point, but I'm going to try to try and convert a number of these guys over to our side because I would like to return to a cavalry focus as as much as I can but obviously it is a bit difficult to do that at the moment with us being attacked by pretty much everything in the world so let's see uh, I could give them 245,000 in exchange for a whole bunch of armor for our friends here so I think that might make sense because I can also trade a whole bunch of other stuff so I'm only going to spend 120,000. They do have some food as well, which I very much appreciate. So I will be taking some of that because how much do I actually have? 19. That's actually not even that bad. So we'll spend 125,000 on that just because having upgraded gear is really important for our companions. And especially with auto equip, uh, the auto equip mod, it really makes all the difference. Massive, massive changes in the click of a button. And that's exactly what we like to see. So, otherwise, I'm just going to level these guys up. All right, so this guy has 246 recruits ready for battle, and I'm perfectly happy to go in and fight him. As you can see, he has... Why, why does he have so many people? Like, uh, wh why? Already? It's just super crazy. Super crazy, but it's okay, because we are going to be fine. We are going to be absolutely fine. It is just a matter of time for us to uh, eliminate these guys. At least I hope so. I might be overconfident here. You know, that's the point. Usually, what happens in Mount and Blade for me, specifically in Warband, don't think it's really happened too much in Bannerlord, but I gain uh, quite a bit of confidence in my unit's abilities over the course of a campaign. And then all of a sudden I'm overconfident and I put way too much, I don't know, way too much value in what they're able to do. And then all of a sudden I'm on the losing side and we lose a huge battle and then get taken prisoner and it's all terrible. So that's the kind of thing that I'd like to try and avoid at this point. So if I can kind of keep my overconfidence, shall we say, in check, then we should be having a pretty decent time of things. I'm going to just leave my cavalry on charge at this point, as we do want to be very careful. Ah, I got a hit in the face. Are you serious? That hurt. That hurt like no one's business. My goodness. Okay. Yeah, that was not exactly great. Okay, I'm going to just bring out my bow here and try and shoot a couple of people. Wow, there's a lot of enemies. Wow, that is a lot. Thankfully, most of them seem to be running. A couple of them seem to be running, not all. Yeah, this is really bad. I mean, we're doing fine. I mean, obviously we're going to do fine because the enemy mostly has recruits. But the fact is, is that we don't really want to be in a situation where Byron gets himself killed. So I'm just going to try and uh, do additional damage to as many people as possible. If we can just do more morale damage as well. Morale damage is, of course... In my opinion, one of the most important things that you can inflict. And did I? Wait a minute. 
I've left my horse archers back there. I only charged my cavalry. Hmm. Well. <laughs> we didn't need them, I guess. So we didn't need them. And uh, I guess keeping a, a healthy stable of horse archers is, you know, kind of good. And I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you charge into a bunch of guys and they have pole arms and you're, you're riding a horse. Pretty crazy. But it's okay, because we are going to achieve a victory here very, very easily, in fact. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to take all of these guys prisoner. Because even though I'd like to try and persuade them to join us, they just generally end up joining armies again and again and again. And it just doesn't make that much sense for me to continue fighting them every two days. You know, they, they are capable of doing that very, very quickly indeed. So... I guess, I guess we'll just do that, you know, I guess we'll just do that. So we'll just take them prisoner and we'll just try and take as many fiefs of theirs as I can possibly get my hands on. What about this guy? He has the reputation of being attentive, careful to reward loyal followers. I mean, he's the, uh, he's the leader of his clan and it might make sense for us to persuade him, but I think we've tried to persuade him before, haven't we? And he really doesn't like us. So I guess I'll just take him prisoner. Uh, it's kind of, it's kind of a shame to be honest, because I'd like to be able to persuade them, but it's very difficult to do that. Should we let this guy go? Yeah, he's only a tier four. If he's only a tier four, then I think it would be much easier for us to deal with him. Same with this guy. I must remain your enemy, but I'm grateful nonetheless. Uh, well, maybe he's a martial personality or something like that. I don't exactly know. We'll take looters because they can actually advance thanks to our disciplinarian skill. And once again, I will be mostly taking cavalry units prisoner. Okay, so I've actually prepared pretty nicely for this siege at Jamia Castle. And we're going to be going for some fire onagers to begin with. I've uh, also constructed a bunch of normal onagers. And we're going to see how this goes. As long as we can get the walls down, that's all I really care about. But obviously we do have to deal with the enemy siege equipment. And they're pretty good. They're pretty good at doing damage. So hopefully we'll at least be able to get them down. If one of my onagers goes down, then I will, of course, just replace them. Okay, so we do have a couple of laws that Carith wants to wants to pass here. So higher trade penalty in town, settlement prosperity is decreased by one per day. Mm, I'm not entirely sure about this, sir, but I'll take it just literally because I would like to keep this guy um, keep this guy with us, and the prosperity as it stands right now is insane with most of our most of our fiefs, so we don't even really need to worry about it. As you can see, Phaikaon's at 8,412, and usually they do have some kind of passive prosperity bonus anyway, so even if they lose one prosperity per day, that's not actually that, that much of a deal, because they don't actually go into the negative. They're only reducing how much positive prosperity they gain, which... Hopefully is understandable. Hopefully I explained that right. <laughs> uh, I'm really bad at explaining things, so I do apologize. But anyway, hopefully you understood it. Anyway, so yeah, now this is going to be a pretty easy victory for us right here. Look at that. Unfortunately, the enemy does have 900 and... Oh. Well. Is, is, should I go in there? Uh... Uh, I don't know whether he's... Is he going to attack me with the militia? You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna play this safely. Don't really want to because playing safely is sometimes... Yeah, you know, just a little bit, a little bit tedious. But I do very much want to take this castle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure we have as many really good units as we possibly can. So just getting all this, uh, all this cavalry with us here. And... Then, we will be attacking him. Hello, sir. Okay, are you, uh... Ah, oh, you're faster than I am. Well, that's... That's kind of unfortunate. Oh, you're going to be slower now, aren't you? Oh, yes. You are much slower now, sir. Okay, it is about time that you get murdered. Okay, so now I'm going to just talk to him first. Because I might very well be able to do something. Okay, here we go, here we go. All right, let's try it. Ooh, okay. Uh, I think I think this guy's going to ask me to pay him a huge amount of money. We have plus 17 relation with his clan, so technically we should be okay. Okay. Not bad. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so please join me for free. 
Yes, he joined us for free. Okay, that is fantastic. That is really, really good. Okay, so now that means their army is disbanded, as you can see. And we're back. Ah, yes, it's it's now been uh, multiple hours since my uh, previous um, little recording was done. And, uh, well, we're back here. Now, that is the... Uh, that is just the quintessential thing to happen, isn't it? Yes. Huge amounts of very noisy neighbors outside. And I know that someone actually mentioned something very cool, actually. Um, the, uh, what is it called again? The uh, RTX voice or something like that. And apparently that is a super cool way of reducing the, uh, the sound in the background of your recording. And you can even use it without RTX cards as well, because I don't actually have an RTX card. So I, I initially thought that you needed one, but apparently not. Apparently you just need to change a couple of lines of code and then you are good. And you can actually use this uh, this kind of uh, plugin or whatever it is. I'm actually not entirely sure what it is even. But um, yeah, just bear in mind that I unfortunately will not be able to use it just for the sheer fact that I don't actually use software that is compatible with it. Um, as far as I'm aware, at least. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, the point is, is that that's the reason why I had to stop. And now we're back, and we're going to be doing some damage to these... I was going to say Saranids. <laughs> I was going to say Saranids, but no, no. We're going to do some damage to these Azurai units. And hopefully we'll be able to poke them. Poke them to death. That is what we want to do to them. Thank you very much. I have a lot of... A lot of, a lot of people on the uh, battlefield here. First thing I don't think, don't think these guys are going to be able to do much. We're actually in a kind of weird, weird setting here. You know, it's a weird environment, and uh, I guess, I guess this is pretty good for us. Um, I guess I'm I, I, actually. You know what? I I would prefer not to be on this battlefield. I think that this battlefield is probably one of my um, not hated, but eh, kind of the things that I I prefer not to really fight on because it forces you into a natural bottleneck and it makes yeah makes fighting just that little bit more difficult and certainly something that I don't really need right now I need uh, I need simple battlefields for a simple mind such as mine so it would be good if I could stay like that if at all possible you know if I could have those simple battlefields but it's all right. It's all right. I'm going to tell my people to charge in now. Horse archers, cavalry, etc. And we'll leave the infantry where they are. Got to be a bit careful here, though, because, of course, we still have a number of enemies with spears that are perfectly happy to tear us a new one. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, be a bit careful and avoid as much as possible. Oh, oh I went over. I tried to go over right there but doesn't seem to really be making too much difference. And I believe that is indeed it. Yeah, I think that uh, there's only 50 enemies remaining. I did actually want to speak to Saruk, because I believe he is actually the leader of a clan, but unfortunately I wasn't able to do that because he was already in a battle. This is exactly the reason why I wanted to try and persuade the leader of the army itself, because if you're able to do that, then as I said in, uh, well, a couple of hours ago, as I said then, um, if you can do that, then you can disband the army, and then you can kind of divide and conquer very, very easily, and this is exactly what we've done. We've actually done a very good job of that. We did lose seven units, but obviously we did have a couple of people with us here, and I'm actually helping them along as well, which is very nice. Okay, so this guy is no one really... Yeah, this is a clan tier six. Gonna take him prisoner. This guy's part of uh, Unkid's clan, as far as I'm aware. So, uh, same, same as this guy. And Suruk is a leader, I believe. Yes, as you can see. And he's actually clan tier 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to let him go because I would like to be able to try and persuade him to join us, if at all possible. And let's see exactly what's going on here. I have a decent amount of space. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take absolutely every single prisoner that I can. And then I can just place them in my town. And uh, hopefully we can try and sort through them 
at that point. I'd like to be able to speak to this guy if at all possible. I wonder whether my forces will be able to catch up to him. Uh, hello. Tyus is there. Okay, what's he doing? Why is he still just standing there randomly? I'm not entirely sure what he's doing. Okay, he's running away from him, which is very nice. This guy, ah, no, he gave up the chase. He gave up the chase. That's not what we want. Get him. Get that guy. Chase him down. Yes, he is an evildoer. We must take him. Yes, there we go. We must take him prisoner. All right, so yeah, we're just going to do auto resolve here. Get this guy out of the way as soon as possible. And he will be taken prisoner because I have attempted to persuade him multiple times. And he just does not want to. No, he just does not want to. So we'll just let him, let him go with whoever wants to take him prisoner, which is absolutely fine. And now we're going to go over... Well, that's the thing. Do I want to wait until that fellow comes out of his garrison somewhere? Because, I mean, uh, I'm not entirely sure who it was now. Was it Saruk? I think it was Saruk. So generally, if I see Saruk come out somewhere, then it might make sense for me to, uh, you know, <laughs> potentially speak to him and say, Hey, do you want to do you want to maybe join me? Because my faction is, in my opinion, stronger than the Azurai right now. And if we can kind of get them to join us, then we can actually gain more combat strength and more combat strength and more combat strength. And then once we have that, we will be able to persuade even more people to join us. Because I think the main reason why you need to spend money sometimes to persuade people is just for the sheer fact that they don't believe that they're going to be safe. And having some kind of compensation is what they need to give them that extra push. And so if we have more combat strength, it's going to be more likely that these guys will join us for free. And that's the kind of thing that I would love to have happen. So I'm thinking we're probably going to try and do something about that reasonably reasonably soon. If, if we can find Saruk and maybe speak to him, then that would be great. There's Lek. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to go into the dungeon here and we'll just place all of my uh, non-cavalry prisoners in here. Because as I said before, I'd like to try and recruit as many, uh, as many cavalry as I possibly can. Uh, apart from these guys, of course, because they're really high tier. They're not going to really be able to join us or anything like that, but uh, that's fine. That's actually fine. Okay, we can put those in there as well. And we can put this guy in there. Actually wondering whether I should just put all of my lords in there as well. Because it doesn't really make that much difference if I keep them in my army or not. Because as I said previously, I don't know what the percentages of them escaping actually are. So I, I guess I, I will just put them into the dungeon here. Now bear in mind that this is making the town of Habyar into somewhere that people will love to besiege. But they would love to take this, just for the sheer fact that there are so many prisoners here that are extremely valuable. So it's definitely something to be a bit aware of if we um, <laughs> if we see a big army going towards it. I mean, we've got a decent garrison there right now. A decent garrison, not too bad. We have this guy who's running around, and I'd like to... Okay, Lek! Help me, sir. Help me, Mr. Lek. Okay, come over here. Come over here. Come on now. We can do this. Perfect. We've got him. Get him. Ah, no. He's just that little bit, little bit too fast. Uh, I was really hoping that we might be able to speak to this guy and maybe try and persuade him. But unfortunately, we won't be able to do that because Lek did get him in combat before. Ah, mm, I really thought I'd be able to catch him, but I think I was basically either even or just a little bit slower than he was. And as you can see, this guy does not like us one bit. He has minus 60 relation. And I am going to let him go because he actually has a decent personality, as you can see. You're indeed a man of honor, sir. I should not forget this. That's how you know that uh, uh, you know a particular person has a good personality. Um, but yeah, obviously... It's kind of difficult to tell that unless you let them go all the time. And if you let them go, then they're more than likely going to come back and bite you, which is generally what has been happening so far. So I'm just going to take a couple of prisoners there. Not too many because I don't really want to be walking around extremely slowly. 
And we're going to be going over here to Jamayed Castle. I will see if I can maybe take that because... Um, actually, wait a minute. That clan that joined me, they... <laughs> they actually had stuff. Look at that. They actually had um, a couple of thieves under their control. That's fantastic. That's really cool. So we have expanded our territory in one fell swoop just by persuading these guys to join us. Let's take a look. Look at this. Our, our, our faction strength has increased by such a significant amount. We had about 4,600, and now we have 6,400, which is pretty cool. And the Azurai has 1,400. They really are basically at the end of their tether, but we still have a number of thieves to go. Look at this. We have huge amounts of thieves to go. So the best thing that I can do now is just try and persuade enemies to join us. So... I'm wondering whether I should just put a bunch of people in my garrison at the town over there and then just run around trying to speak to people and try and persuade them. That might actually make sense. Okay, so I have dramatically reduced my army size, as you can see right here. I have about 240 units, and Saruk over there has just defeated Lek in a battle. How fast is he? He's at 4.1. Well, 4.3, and we're moving at 5.4, so we will very easily be able to speak to him. And bear in mind that I have actually changed my army composition quite dramatically now that we have a lot of Azurai units to a much more cavalry focused. Three troops have deserted from the garrison. Ah, mm, that is, uh, mm, that, that is going to grind my gears quite heavily now, isn't it? Yes, that is actually very sad. That means that my people will start leaving now because there are just too many in the garrison there, which is really quite awful. Anyway, I'm going to continue trying to chase this guy down because I would like to be able to try and persuade him to join us. He is the leader of a tier four clan. And let's see whether that works. Hello there. Okay, so do you like me? Yeah, he actually does. Look at that. Plus 35. Okay, nice. Let's see what we can do. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's not very good. Okay, what about... Uh... What about this one? Yes. Okay, I'm not entirely sure how we already have two points in uh, in that. Yeah, there we go. We did it. And he joined us for free. Yes, fantastic. And now, as you can see, Lek has been freed because of this, because he has joined us. And now bear in mind that because Saruk was actually the lord of Jamaye Castle, as well as Iakis, that means that I don't need to besiege them. And he can literally just join us and then it is all good. That is really quite cool, in my opinion. Okay, so what about Hakan? Hakan is not the leader of his own clan, so I don't need to hunt him down. But I do need to hunt someone else down by the name of... Let's have a look here. Hashan? No, I don't need to hunt him down either. But there is someone around here that I think I need to hunt down. So let's actually just go over there real quick and see what is happening. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Aha, there he is. Talas. I need to speak to Talas as soon as possible. So let's see if I can speak to him. And I do apologize, by the way, if you hear anything in the background, those are my wonderful neighbors once again. There are numerous, numerous wonderful people that don't make any noise whatsoever. Sarcasm has been enabled in that sentence. Anyway, let's have a look here and see if we can speak to Talas. And I think I might be able to persuade him because their, their faction strength is so incredibly low that we might have a really, really good opportunity. Look at this. He's joined. Okay. Well, uh, mm. yes, he's not going to join. <laughs> uh, he's still doing the same thing that he was beforehand. Okay, I guess we'll just go in manually because I don't really want to lose too many of my troops at this point. And this is another natural bottleneck map, which I've got to say I'm not a big fan of, as I've said before, really don't like this. But I have so many cavalry... Oh, what a... wait a minute. Is that mine? That's mine. Okay, I actually thought that the enemy was pouring over the cliffside there. And you can see how many uh, archers I actually have. I have five archers now, but I have 59 infantry, 66 regular cavalry, and 104 horse archers. So I have restructured my army by a pretty considerable amount. And I'm looking forward to seeing how well we do here, because obviously I haven't really played with a cavalry-centric army for quite some time. 
And uh, well, basically what we have to do with this is we have to change the fundamental way that we've been playing because obviously beforehand I would get my archers into position, I'd get my infantry into a nice defensive position as well to make sure that our archers don't get assaulted too much. And then as a result, we would be able to tear apart the opponent and we'd be able to come in with our cavalry from the side or from behind or wherever we want to come from. And then our archers would be able to destroy any shielded units that would turn to face the horse archers and so on. So it, it had a kind of, you know, one-two punch kind of feel to it where the archers would do most of the damage and then the, the horse archers would add a little bit of a, a threat element to the opponent. So they'd have to, you know, defend from multiple different locations and it would just be almost impossible for them to do that. So that's hopefully what I'm going to be able to do here with my infantry though. Hopefully I can get my infantry to go a little bit um, toward the opponent and then maybe we can come in with my own cavalry because I've actually told them to follow me. I don't know whether you noticed that but they are actually following me here and hopefully what I'll be able to do is turn around. Yeah, we're, I know we're leaving the area but don't worry we're not going to be leaving it for far too long. There we go. And now we're going to try and get on the top of this hill here. Oh, where are my guys? Okay, there's my guys. Let's tell them to go there. And I don't have many archers, so it's basically pointless for me to tell them to do anything, in my opinion. And let's see if we can maybe do something now. Okay, let's just charge in. Let's charge in my infantry as well. And, oh, it seems like some of my people have already kind of gotten a bit invested into, into the attack, which I did not really want them to do. Thank you very much. But oh well, never mind. I think it will be okay. I don't think my infantry is that good anymore, by the way. So we might end up losing quite a few of them. Because most of my infantry that I placed in the garrison were really high tier. I'm talking about, you know, tier 5 units for the most part. And so um, we'll see if we maybe end up taking a few casualties. But you can see here that we're just swarming them. There's literally nothing that they can do. So that is indeed a, a wonderful victory for us. I would have liked to have had a... A uh, much more open battlefield because it would have made the the whole maneuver that I attempted to do here much more grand and glorious, and uh, it would have been a cool sight to see. But yeah, well, I guess we'll get the opportunity to do something like that in the future. All right, there you go. Unfortunately, again, we will not be able to get this guy because he is just so incredibly stubborn, and I guess I'll just take him prisoner instead. Because even though we do have the ability to potentially persuade him, he uh, he does not want to. He does not want to for uh, some reason. I'm actually not sure why. Because his combat strength with his faction is really, really low right now. Okay, so who owns Kasira? I would like to be able to see... Ah, uh, that's not the right spelling. That is the right spelling. There we go. Talas actually owns it. Yeah, so if I had been able to persuade him to join us then we would have been in a great position there because we would have just gained massive amounts of, of towns and, and territory for not much effort whatsoever. So, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely something to consider. But look at this. Look at this. We, we have been doing pretty nicely, I gotta say. Pretty nicely. As you can see, only Kasira and Sanala from the towns remain. And then obviously we have two castles there as well. Unfortunately, the Batanians do seem to also be attacking at the same time. And as we know, the Batanians are already extremely powerful. The Kuzate haven't really been doing anything either. Not entirely sure who's at war against who right now. Let's actually just take a look. Uh, yeah, that's not what I want. I would like to just go to... The ah, yeah, there we go, there we go. Can I not can I not select that? Okay, apparently I can't select that. So I guess I'm just going to go here and select them instead. All right, so who are they at war against? They are at war against Batania. That's fantastic. And they're also at war against Test Clan as well. I can only imagine how powerful Test Clan is going to be. Wow, I do not want to fight those guys, that's for sure. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.